You're watching CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Hello, I'm Pat Harvey, and here are your top stories. We're tracking another blast of strong winds and cold weather tonight. Taking a look at Santa Monica, there are also coastal flooding concerns because of high morning tides and high surf. Danny Roberti is tracking all the advisories and warnings tonight with yeah. your next weather, Danny. Yeah, Pat, things are going to get blustery going into tonight. And that's all because you mentioned that storm that's going to be moving in from the Pacific Northwest. We're tracking it right now. This is going to send a cold front in and we're going to see a, a combination of a couple different things. We've got rain, we've got snow and we've got wind. But the bigger impact out of these, it's going to be the wind and it will be widespread going into tonight. We've already seen gusts up to about 40 miles per hour through areas like Lancaster. Things are are starting to get breezy near the beaches as well. And Pat mentioned those warnings and advisories. Let me walk you through these. We have a high wind warning that's in effect right now for all these areas shaded in that orange. These are the areas where we're going to see our strongest winds going into tonight. We're talking gusts up to 60 miles per hour and some of those more wind prone spots up in the mountains. You could see gusts up to 80 miles per hour. Now these warnings also include the San Fernando Valley and also the Santa Clarita Valley. Everywhere else we're talking wind advisory. So why widespread 40 mile per hour gusts. This includes the beaches of Orange County, even the LA Basin. So let's take a look at when they will become strong because some of these, they might wake you up in the middle of the night, folks. So you can see by about 830, it's going to be windy and breezy in the mountains, up in the high desert. And you can see right here through Oxnard. So our beaches of Ventura County, LA County into Orange County, we'll start to see those winds picking up by about midnight, really between 10 PM tonight and midnight. And then they really start filtering over into the valleys. I mean, Anaheim is going to see wind gusts up to about 20 miles per hour at that point, and that's going to be the case even in LA County. Overnight, they will be the strongest around 3 o'clock. So impacts with these winds, it could be down trees, power outages, even difficulty with travel along the interstates or some of those secondary side streets. Breezy when you get out the door tomorrow morning, 830. Winds are going to stick with us through the first half of the day, and then they'll finally start winding down by about noon. But still, either way, things are going to be pretty breezy going into tomorrow afternoon. On top of that, I mentioned the rain and the snow. I mean, we're not going to see a whole lot in the way of rain for us. If anything, maybe a tenth of an inch of rain. So just some stray showers out there. But snow is likely over the grapevine, and this is where travel is going to be treacherous. This is a look at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you can see right there on the 5, some of that snow, and then things are going to be pretty calm and clear by about 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, temperatures are going to feel cool, so we'll also get some cold air moving in, a few early showers, but the afternoon dry, sunny, temperatures hovering in the low 60s for most of us. Here's the thing. We have another storm on the move this upcoming week, and we'll talk about that one, but warmer days ahead of us. We're breaking all that down for you coming up at 8 on KCAL. Pat. All right. See you then, Danny. Well, tonight, officials have identified the man killed in today's avalanche at a ski resort near Lake Tahoe. 66-year-old Kenneth Kidd lived in both Point Reyes and the Truckee area. Three other people were hurt in the incident. The search is now over. No one else is suspected to be missing. Now, this video tonight shows the search for the survivors buried in the snow. Fire crews, sheriff's officials, and over 100 resort employees helped in the search. Palisades Tahoe officials say crews tested the safety of the lift and deemed it safe to open today. Now taking a look at LAX tonight, calm conditions ahead of the holiday weekend, but some travelers may face some disruptions, and that's because Alaska Airlines is canceling all flights on its 737 MAX 9 jets through Saturday as it continues inspections into last week's mid-air blowout. The decision will affect about 110 to 150 flights each day. Both Alaska and United Airlines reported finding loose bolts and other problems on some of those planes. Now, Governor Newsom has unveiled his $291 billion state budget plan with a nearly $38 billion deficit. KCAL News reporter Tom Waite has a look. Governor Gavin Newsom laying out his first draft, essentially, of what the state budget will look like next year. There is a big deficit, but he says it's not nearly as large as the one that was predicted. Right now, it looks like there's about a $38 billion deficit. That's according to the governor. The Legislative Analyst Office, a nonpartisan group, well, they estimated a $68 billion deficit, but the governor says that was overly pessimistic. He says that difference is kind of due in part to some rebounding stock market issues. 
But again, there is going to have to be some cuts in the budget. Newsom says some of those cuts will come from climate programs and housing programs, but it does not look like any of the big hits will come to any of the school districts here in Southern California. There's also a rainy day fund where the governor can draw from there to help make up some of that budget deficit, some of that gap there. One uh, Republican is criticizing, and several actually, but one is speaking out pretty harshly against the plan for the budget to include money for uh, undocumented immigrants' health care. Uh, that is several, several billion dollars in the budget. And certainly that's something that has caused some controversy, controversy among Republicans. So of course, we'll have much more on this, uh, on the budget deficit and what the governor plans to do to close that gap. Efforts to ban tackle football for young kids in California have passed their first major hurdle. KCAL News reporter Leslie Marine is working on that story tonight. We're at a park in Manhattan Beach tonight where behind me you can see some kids are playing soccer, others are playing basketball, and in the fall months you could possibly see some kids playing tackle football. But if a state lawmaker has it their way, well, tackle football would be banned for kids under 12. That is a bill going through the state legislature currently. It passed its first committee hearing today. Now, the state lawmaker from Sacramento who introduced the bill says it's meant to prevent serious injury and brain trauma for kids whose brains are still developing at such a young age before playing a sport like tackle football. On the other side, we're also speaking to parents who say they should have the right to choose whether or not their kids play tackle football or any other sport. Tonight, hear from both sides of this issue. Well, this has been CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back live at KCAL News at 8 o'clock here on CBS News Los Angeles.